G'day creative photo folk. I'm Hayley and in this video I'm going to show you a few simple ways to add shapes to landscapes to create what I call land shapes. This effect turns any landscape into an intriguing surreal artwork that's sure to stop the scroll. So we'll start with this one here. Now, I watched a lot of videos to see how this was done, and every single one of them way overcomplicated this process. It's actually really easy to do using just a couple of steps. So I'm not sure why everyone else is teaching this really strange way. So what I'm going to do is make a copy of this initial layer, and then we'll start from scratch. So this is a photograph I shot in Japan, somewhere near Mount Fuji. Now, really important is make a copy of your layer. So Control or Command J to make a copy. Now we will create our sphere shape. So to do that, you need to choose your marquee tool. It's the second one down on your toolbar. And you can hold that down and make sure that elliptical marquee tool is selected. Now, if you draw a shape now, you will get all sorts of circular shapes. If you want a perfect circle, hold down shift as you draw it. Then before you let go of your mouse or of shift, you can hit your space bar and then just gently move that into position. Then when you're happy, you can let everything go. If you want to change the shape after the fact, you can press Ctrl or Command T and then drag the handles out to make it bigger or smaller or reposition it. So all you need to do is go to Filter, Distort, Sphere Eyes, and then you'll get this kind of distorted sphere. So we'll move the amount up to 100. You can make it smaller, but it's really not going to help you out in this situation. And we'll hit OK. And then you've got a little bit of distortion. So Ctrl or Command D to deselect and see what you've got. However, if you want to make it even more distorted, we will step back. And we will again go to Filter, Distort, Sphere Eyes. We just have to run it a couple of times if you want it even more distorted. So in this case, we will run with that. Now, really important, before we deselect this, let's add a layer mask. So if I hit my Add Layer Mask button, which is the rectangle with the circle in the middle, now we have just got that sphere on its own layout without all this background. So if you wanted to run with this, you could. It already looks like a glass ball, but there's a few things we can do to really sell the effect. Now, if you wanted, you could go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Vertical. And then you've actually got what looks like a glass ball because it's usually refracted upside down. I don't want to do that, but you could. Press Ctrl or Command Z to undo that. Now, I'm just going to go to my Move tool, top one in the toolbar, or V, it's a shortcut, and just line that up a little better with the horizon. Personal taste, I just think that looks a little better. Then, let's take a look at the environment. So the sun is here. Presumably, you'd have a bit of lightness on the top of the ball and a bit of darkness on the bottom where it's kind of reflecting the darkness of the ground. So let's do that next. Now, lots of ways you could do this. All I'm going to do is to add a brand new layer. So with a new layer mask button, I'm going to hit my brush tool to load the brush, or B is a shortcut. I'm going to make sure that white is selected in my little swatch here. Pull that right up to the top left, hit OK. I'm going to make my opacity, which is found here, maybe about 50%. Then I can start to just paint a little bit of whiteness around the image. Now you see it's also going from to the background, so to prevent that we can just clip it to our main layer by hitting Alt or Option and then clicking between that layer and the layer below it. So now we've just got it here. And to reduce that effect, we can now just bring down the opacity a little so it blends a bit better. Beautiful. Now, presumably you'd have a little bit more at the top here than you would at the side here because that's where the light's coming from. So I could add a layer mask and just gently paint some of that away. Like so. Now, to darken the bottom, we just do the exact same thing, but we use black. So, new layer. Clip it with Alt or Option. Grab black this time. So I can hit D to set my swatch to its default and bring black back. And I can now paint that around the bottom. And again, bring down the opacity. We could also play with our blend modes if we wanted to affect how that looked. I don't think I will. Now, as you'll see in this original, I've actually placed it into the environment. So if you want to see how that was done, all I did was turn off my sphere. Then, uh, highlighting my original layer, I went to my Object Selection tool with W, fourth one down on the toolbar, and if I hold that down, just make sure that top one is selected, and then I went sort of like this, because I only want to select the top of those plants. Let's see how it does. Not too bad. We will try and add a little bit more over here. Pretty good. I just want to now hold down Alt or Option and scoop out this bit here. Great. 
And then all I'm going to do is load my lasso tool with L, hold down shift to say I want to add to this selection and I'm just going to add a bit more to it at the bottom here. Fantastic. I can even refine that a little better by holding down Alt or Option, just painting some bits away. Now, back on our sphere layer, I can highlight the layer mask, load black with my brush tool, and then just paint. We'll have to bring up our opacity. Paint that foreground back in over top inside that selection. So now it's sitting behind the plants. Now to just differentiate a little further, I made it, that bottom of it even darker. We'll do that with say a curves adjustment layer. I'll pull that down and then I can use black and my brush tool and paint it away from the top. Looking pretty good. There's only one more thing I think I would do and I this time will add a gradient adjustment layer. So I'll click on my adjustment layer, choose gradient, and I want a radial gradient. I want it to be white. So I'm just going to double click this one here, the bottom little tab here, and choose white. Hit OK. You can see now what that's doing. And I can drag that into position. I would probably put it on this side since that's where the sun is. I could make it smaller with the scale. And I think that looks pretty good. Again, I'm going to clip that so it's not outside the shape. And then I can bring it down the opacity simple right so that's pretty much it that was the original it wasn't it distorted quite as much and it's a little smaller but pretty much the same effect so to show you another example of using this I created this one here and so what I did differently with this one let's go through the layers is pop my sphere in darken the bottom made the top brighter but I also gave it a shadow so it fit so to do that I just added a new layer under my sphere Again, I used my elliptical marquee tool, but this time I didn't hold down shift. I just sort of drew it out like this, made it about the same width as my shape, and then moved it into position. Then I edit, fill, chose black, hit OK, and then deselected with Control or Command D. And then I just really blurred that up with filter, blur, Gaussian blur, made that quite high. You'll see it's got that nice shadow there. And if you wanted, you could paint that away from certain areas, like the front of the water here. But I think that looks kind of cool. So that's our first technique. So let's take a look at how to make an abstract sphere. So for this one, let's turn everything off again. That's kind of cool too, don't you think? All right, so for this one, similar. Just made a circle by holding down shift and using my marquee tool, let go. I created a new layout this time, so I added a new blank new layer. And then what I did is went to Edit, Fill. You can fill this with any color you like, it really doesn't matter. So let's just go with what's there, hit OK, and then Control or Command D to deselect. Next, I made a copy of my background layer. So I highlighted my background layer, pressed Control or Command J, dragged that to the top. And what I'm going to do is press Alt or Option again between those two layers so the image layer clips to the shape layer. Now what I might do is make this a smart object. So I will right click on it and go to convert to smart object. That means that when we apply the next effect, we can go in and change it if we like after the fact. And then I'm going to go to filter, distort, twirl. Now the unfortunate thing about twirl is you can't actually see it doing anything. So you're just guessing, which is why we made it into a smart object. So if we don't like what we get, we can go in and change it. So really, you're just kind of guessing. I might go for something around 700 and hit OK, just as a starting point. And you'll see what that has done. I don't mind that. You can, if you like, then with your move tool loaded with V, move that around if you wanted. So maybe something like that. And again, we just need to do what we did previously, which is darken the bottom. So again, I'm going to add a new layer. This time I'm going to start with black. So it'll make sure that your brush tool is loaded with B, black is loaded, make it a little bit smaller, make sure the brush is really soft. And then I will paint around the bottom. I will clip that, so it's clipping to the shape by holding down Alt or Option and clipping between, and then bring down the opacity on that. Now we'll do the same with the top. We will add a new layer, clip it, grab white, paint around the top, and bring down the opacity. Now, right now it looks like it's floating, so we again need to give it a shadow. 
Same way as before, we will add a new layer underneath our shape. We will use the marquee tool, draw out the shape, move it into position, fill it with black. So edit, fill, choose black as the contents, hit OK, deselect with Control or Command D, and then we'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, just to make that a little bit blurry. I don't mind that, 69.7. It was an overcast day, so there probably wouldn't have been a lot of shadow, actually. It's a little bit about there, I think. And then I could drink, drag down the opacity if I wish, but I don't think I will. I might just, however, move that a little bit. So I'll move it a little bit over to the left. That looks okay, maybe a bit lower. So just to compare, that was before, this is our version. There's a couple of other things I did to this image. I just overall added a level to the whole image and just made it a little bit more contrasty, but that raised the saturation, which I didn't like. So then I added a hue saturation and pulled a little bit out. So that is pretty much the same effect, just that the twirl was in a different position. And you can do that by hitting Control or Command T on that layer and moving it around. Now, finally, we have this effect. So what I will do is turn everything off. So this was my original image right here. And what I did is I wanted this to be a square, so to give me some space, because usually when you shoot your landscapes, you kind of do them as two thirds. So it doesn't give you enough space in the sky to put your shape. So what I did is extended it into a square. So it would have opened up as this shape here. And then I hit the crop tool with C, made sure that at the very top here, one to one was chosen and then dragged out the edge so that I got that extra space at the top to make it a square. Then hit the tick when I was happy. Then to create that extra color, I just added a brand new layer and with white, actually what I did is I chose a color from the image. So I held down Alt or Option so it turns into an eyedropper and then I can sample a color and then I will just paint that in. And this seems not gonna match, but that's okay. That's not bad. I mean, we could make a selection of the mountains so that it fit properly with select sky. I'm just going to add a layer mask. What I might even do is paint even a little bit more over the image, but I will then highlight my layer mask, use the gradient tool with G, making sure that the black to transparent is loaded. And then I can just drag that in like so. Make sure that seam in the middle is gone just like that. So it blends really nicely and we'll get out of the gradient tool. So the next bit is quite easy. We, um, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different take first of all. So we will go into our marquee tool again, but this time I will use the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to draw a shape and hold down my space bar to move that into position. Then I will highlight my landscape layer again, make a copy of it with control or command J. That has now put that selection into its own little box on its own layer. And then I can go to edit, transform, flip vertical, and we'll move that actually up over that sky layer we painted earlier. And then I can move that up into position. And if I want, I can add a layer mask to that and then just get rid of this seam to make it blend a bit better. I could make it right up to the mountains or I could leave a little bit of a seam like I have here. So that was what right up to the mountains might look like. So you can do this with a rectangular shape, pretty cool. You could even then flip it if you wanted. So edit, transform, flip horizontal this time, just to give it some kind of symmetry. So that's how you would do it with the marquee tool as a rectangle, but now we will do it as a circle. So the one I prepared earlier looked like this, but this time we're going to do this version here. So again, this time I will make a selection, which is circular, holding down my shift key to make a circle. I will choose the bit of the image that I want to select. So let's say this bit here. Then I will highlight my landscape layer again, make a copy of it with Control or Command J, and then we can go Edit, Transform, Flip, Vertical. And again, we'll drag that up over the top of that sky layer we created and using the Move tool with V, I can drag that into any position I like. I can, even if I want to make it bigger with Control or Command T and drag out the edges. So I could actually even have this sitting in the landscape. There's just so much you can do here if you really want. I think I will go for something like that. Now I could keep this edge in if I wanted, or I could apply a layer mask and then using my brush tool and black, I could paint away. Again, I could leave a little bit of the edge or I could paint right up to the edge. And that's how you create that.
And so I'll just show you just a couple more examples while we're here. So this one here I really like. That's actually sitting in the landscape by the look. So what I've done is applied a layer mask to it and I've selected the mountains and then just put the little circle kind of behind it. This one here I did with a city, which I thought was pretty cool. So I just took a circular selection of the city and flipped it upside down. It does need a little bit of cleaning up, but that is a fun one to play with, especially if I cropped it into a square. I think that would be even more impactful. So another thing you could try. This one here, I decided I wanted to change the color of the landscape. So that is what it looked like beforehand. And I did do something slightly different here. So we, maybe we'll talk through that. What I did to really crop into the trees was went to select sky and then just mask that bit of the circle away. So it really cut into the trees. Now I actually replaced the trees all together. So this is what the original image looked like. And I just thought that was a distraction with the shape in. So I actually masked the whole sky away and then just put in a color. So I've used like a limey greeny color to replace that sky. And then to change the color of the landscape, all I did was went to my adjustment layer icon, added a hue saturation, and then I just played with the hue and I made it pink. And then I just reloaded that selection by control clicking on the layer mask of that little circle that I created and painted that color away from it. So much potential here, don't you think? This is another one. Again, this time I used my marquee tool, but I did things a little differently. So what I did in this instance, let us do it together, is went to my rectangular marquee tool. I used this ripple in the water because I thought that would make part of a cool story. So I made it about the same shape. Then I made a copy of my background layer with Controller Command J, but it just popped that little bit onto its own layer. Then I flipped it upside down with Edit, Transform, Flip Vertical, like so. And this time I added a layer mask to it. So the layer mask looked like this. It just sort of gradually faded out at the bottom. So let's do that. I added a layer mask with my gradient tool. So G, making sure black to transparent is selected. I said I want to keep this much, but I want the base to fade into the water. Let's just kind of go with that for this. So we'll get out of that tool. And then what I did is went to Control or Command T and I right clicked inside that and hit distort. And then I just kind of pulled in some of the edges to make them a bit bent. So that's one way you could do it. Another thing you could do if I undid that is to go to Control or Command T again, right click and we'll go to perspective. And then I could make it sort of do a bit of that or a bit of that to make it look like it's sort of receding into the distance. It even looks like it's floating there, which is kind of cool. So much you could play with. I love this technique. It makes such an impactful photo with really little effort, even out of the most uninteresting landscapes. So if you want to turn a landscape into a piece of art that someone might want to hang on their wall, this is a fun way to do it. If you like this effect, be sure to leave me a thumbs up. Otherwise, I will see you again next week with another creative tutorial. Happy creating.